Okay, the books I read in June um, were probably what you could call various. Um, they were all, I would say, kind of classics in a sense. Some were like classic classics and some were like maybe what you could call modern classics. Most of these books I do not have physical copies of because I actually got them from the library. Um, I need physical copies of just a few. Um, these ones here. And this and in this video I'm not gonna go by sort of chronological order or alphabetical order. I'm just gonna like choose the books I read at random. Okay, uh in June I read quite a few Agatha Christie books. Um the first one I read was uh Sparkling Cyanide, which is not uh Hercule Poirot or uh Miss Marple book. It's actually uh, the main, I'll say the main kind of detective character and that is actually Colonel Race who was a character in Death on the Nile so if you've read Death on the Nile you would encounter him there uh, I have to say uh, especially other Agatha Christie books I've read so far mm, probably my least favourite it was still a good book um, in that and it was quite interesting because it was told like from multiple perspectives not just like one kind of overarching narrator the second one I read was Mrs McGinty's Dead and that's a Hercule Poirot book it is about a woman Mrs McGinty who's dead and so now uh Poirot has to figure out who killed Mrs McGinty and I really enjoyed this book I uh, really liked it um it was quite, some parts of it were actually quite funny to me, um, especially sort of Poro in this sort of small village setting, which was not kind of like comfortable for him in many ways. Murder at the Vicarage. And that is, I think, the first Miss Marple book. Um, and that is about a man in uh, this little small English village that is found dead in the library of the local vicar. So obviously everyone is like, what has happened? Why is this guy dead? Uh, and of course then so Miss Marple comes in. Didn't enjoy that as much as Mrs McGinty's dead, but I did enjoy it a lot. So that's really cool. I also read another detective book, it was hmm, uh, When in Rome, it's not by Agatha Christie but by another sort of queen, no, another woman that was considered one of the queens of crime or the queens of mystery writing uh, in the 20th century and it's Nio Marsh and Nio Marsh is a little bit special to me in the sense that she was a New Zealander, she spent most of her time I think in England um, and as far as I know, none of her books are set in New Zealand, but yeah, so, so I thought that was quite a nice connection. I, putting my loyalties aside for our shared, um, shared nationality, I have to say I didn't enjoy it as much as the Agatha Christie books. Um, it's my first Naya Marsh, um, I probably will give her another go, but yeah, I yeah, it just didn't quite click for me as much as um, the Agatha Christie books. But there's also one other mystery novel I read, and it was set, set in a similar time period, set in the 30s, I think, either the late 20s, early 30s, and that is Arnold Bennett's The Great Babylon Hotel. I had never heard of this book. I only got it because I was in my library and the cover looked interesting, and so I bought it. Uh, it is basically about this um sort of American millionaire who buys this hotel, the Grand the Grand Babylon Hotel in London, and all these mysterious things uh, keep happening. Uh, it was a good book. Um, really, I think it quite nicely captured the difference between like the brash, kind of cocky American millionaire and 
sort of the old sort of aristocratic, often penniless Europeans, I did feel it was slow in places. So yeah. Um, I think I gave it two stars. That's all different. I read Ugh. Graham Greene's The Power and the Glory. If you saw my June TBR, you know that I was recommended this by a friend. I really enjoyed it. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. I probably will read another Graham Greene, but I don't think he's probably one of my sort of like top go-to authors. I... It, the story is basically about this priest in Mexico who is on the run from the law. And that was one of the problems with the book. I felt I didn't know enough about Mexican history in the 20th century. Uh, like, for instance, I didn't really know that there was, like, persecutions of um, Catholics, particularly Catholic priests in Mexico in the 20th century. So all of that was new to me. Uh, and I just sort of feel if I knew a little bit more about Mex Mexican history, it may have helped me um, understand this book a little bit better. But it was a great sort of depiction of Mexico's, particularly Mexican rural life, and how in those rural communities um, they live and also how they interact with the, uh, with the priest but also with the sort of government and the authorities. And, yeah. And the one of the biggest things I really liked about this book was um, the priest is, is... He was a character that I was rooting for. Um, without giving any spoilers, I was hoping he would escape. But at the same time, he's not a... Like, in many ways, he's not a likeable figure. He's... Um, has many, many flaws, and yeah, that's what I really liked about uh, his character, um, about Green's portrayal from that. He didn't portray him as a really sort of standout heroic figure, and always he was actually the reverse. So yeah, that's that. Um, I finished reading Selected Stories by Anton Chekhov. Some of them I liked, some of them were just Ugh, to me actually um I'm not saying I won't read any more by Chekhov but I felt a little underwhelmed to be honest um um by at least by some of his stories I I kind of felt like I connected more with Tolstoy's short stories than I did Chekhov's but yeah, so, yeah, so, but I finished that, so that was really cool. That was something I wanted to finish in, in June. And I did a reread of Silas Marner. Silas Marner is one of my favourite books, and I probably might do a video on it, I'm not sure, but uh, I decided to reread it this year, and I thought I will read it, I thought I will reread it in the first month I'm on Booktube. And so I reread it and I maybe didn't get as emotional this time around that I did the first time only because I kind of knew a little bit ahead what was going to happen. But uh, it was still a great book. I still really like it. It still would probably be at least in my top five. And the other one I read, which I don't, I actually lent my copy to someone else, is Charles Dickens' Sketches by Boz. Basically, uh, Boz was uh, the pen name of Charles Dickens, and basically, this was his first book. Not his first, I'll say novel, but his first book. Uh, the difference is, Sketches by Boz is basically, in the laws, it's like a collection of short stories, really, um, or a collection of sketches. Uh, he divides it into, I think, like a parish that he lives in. Um, places, characters, and I think just little short stories. And I thought it was really interesting. I I felt it, for me, 
I kind of liked the short, sort of short story format. That was actually quite cool. But I guess for me, the problem is because it was short stories, you didn't sort of kind of get, unlike with a novel, you didn't sort of kind of get dragged along with the story and there wasn't like, you know, the twists and the turns and the ups and downs so much. So that's what I really noticed. And so I'm hoping to read probably next month the Pickwick papers so it would be interesting to compare them but I really liked it for his sort of writing and his portrayal of London life at the time in the 1800s I think early early 1800s so yeah it was a really really great read the last one I am doing is um Uh, the Lake by Banana Yoshimoto. I had never heard of Banana Yoshimoto, but I saw uh, Katie from Books and Things uh, recommend um, Yoshimoto's, particularly I think her short stories. So that kind of got me intrigued, and I sort of just really would like to read more kind of literature away from the Anglosphere, you know, more kind of world literature. So uh, I picked this book up and it I really liked it. I gave it, I think, a three star. Maybe I would even say I'd give it a 3.5 star. And I definitely would like to read more Banana Yoshimoto's work. It is a very slow kind of story. And I don't mean that, like, in a derogatory way. I don't mean that, like, it was slow, like, oh, my God, this is so boring. Um, no, but it was sort of almost glacial, really, almost a bit like a lake, you know, in that sense. It was basically about this woman who, after the death of her mother, um, went, sort of rented this house by a lake so she could, uh, concentrate on her artwork. And while there, she meets this guy and they slowly kind of form a friendship and then they slowly fall in love. But she realizes that he's holding something back and that's something back and what he is holding back is quite big um but it was it was just a really nice slow pace to it it was yeah it's, it was really good you know um at first it just seemed like it was just about all it was about was like almost mundane stuff about you know, the two characters and their relationship, but in Lord's was done in such, but then it sort of did build to a bit more of a climax, but yeah, it was just, it was really nicely done and really nicely written, so yeah, I would definitely recommend The Lake. Um, so, I've had to change angles a few times because I'm so, I'm actually um, holding my camera and it just has to get a little sore on my arms. So, uh, yeah, so those were my books I read in June. That was uh, what I read in the month of June. Uh, I felt it was a good reading month. Um, overall, I would probably say I really enjoyed the books I read in June. And I'm just looking forward to the books I'm, I am currently reading and I'm going to read in July. And on that note, I will... Don't on on that note please like and subscribe i know i'm a broken record but please like and subscribe and <laughs> i will see you next video